And here's a Senior 28K Victorian design with an original hand crank. The overall components of the sewing machine seem intact. The metal parts look good for its age, while scratches on the decals are proof of good use and add character. And records of the serial number date it back to 1910. Lift the handle to engage the hand crank. You will need to disengage it before storing it inside its box. The machine works, but it is an effort to crank it. When the machine is out of its base, it does not stand level by itself on top of the counter. It needs a wooden base. Remove the hand crank for freedom of movement cleaning around the machine. Next, remove the old needle for safety purposes. Then remove the shuttle to protect the pointed end of the shuttle which acts as a hook. Remove the slide plates so they don't fall off when you're cleaning under the machine. To remove the balance wheel, be mindful of the position of the washer. Surprisingly, the hand crank is easy to remove. Then turn to the face plate and loosen the two small screws. There is a lot of dried oil, dirt, and grease. We will go back to clean this again later. After removing all the cover plates, I set them aside and soak the screws in alcohol for 30 minutes. If you are worried about mixing them up, taking photos will certainly help. In cleaning hard to reach areas, canned air is a good option. I cleaned the stitch length adjustment knob with alcohol and the bobbin winder with sewing machine oil and 800 grit sandpaper. Changing the bobbin tire is a challenge. I also cleaned the part where the balance wheel sits and also sanded the stop motion washer. After sanding the wheel with a little bit of alcohol, I rubbed some vinyl and buffed it with a cotton cloth. And look how shiny it is! For under the sewing machine, I followed the oil points according to the Singer 28K manual. For the top of the machine, I did the same thing following the oil points. However, here I am not quite sure which one of the two holes is an oil point. So I added oil to both of them. I hear a grinding noise here, so I added more oil. Since this is an original hand crank, there are two points that need to be oiled. These parts are dry, so I have to add oil to them, but otherwise, the oil hole on top is enough for regular maintenance. Back to the faceplate, getting rid of the dirt and old oil on the needle bar and presser bar help to make it a smoother movement and a better sound when the machine runs. 
If you find this video useful, I would appreciate it if you click the like button so it can spread to more people and it would be an indication for me that it is being useful. So thank you for doing that. Now back to the sewing machine. I put the small pieces in this small container so they can soak in alcohol before I sand them and wipe them clean. I also removed the thread guide and I also sanded the groove where the rectangular plates slide through so it is easier to open them. Remember the adhesive mark left by the tape? It seems sewing machine oil can clean that too. This time, I remembered to oil the body from the back for good practice. I packed cotton in the small hole and soaked it in oil. This helps with the shuttle movement. Great, it's running so smoothly. Remember the thread assembly parts that I soaked in 91% isopropyl alcohol? I cleaned them with a cotton cloth and rubbed a bit of oil on them too. I sanded the presser foot for a smoother traction. Then, I cleaned all the parts of the tension assembly with alcohol and a dab of Wenol and wiped them clean with a cotton cloth. There is something about hand crank sewing machines that I find meditative. It forces you to slow down when everything around you goes by really fast. It asks you to listen because the rhythm drives you to be in tune with it. And it takes you to a place of serenity, appreciation, and humility.